I want to ask you just how bad is the sexual landscape and environment, particularly for young people, but not exclusively young people today? Very, very bad and getting worse. I would say in a decade of speaking on these issues and being among the first in Australia to identify and call out the harms of pornography to young people and predicting what might happen and being mocked and derided and made fun of at the time, everything that we predicted has come true and even worse than we predicted. The stories that I'm hearing are getting worse and they're getting worse younger. I started out addressing upper secondary, then I was asked to address middle secondary, then I was asked to do seven and eights. I am now getting requests to address grades threes, fours, fives and sixes. And that is a heartbreak to me. When you address children and they are asking questions that relate to sexual harassment, sexual assault, being groped at school, being demanded to send sexual pictures, being asked what to do. Children shouldn't have to navigate how to protect themselves. Just last week, a parent posted a comment on my Facebook page saying that her child was in kindergarten and a boy approached her daughter and said, if you don't do what I want, I'm going to torture you. Now, these ideas are not natural to boys. We have trained and socialised and conditioned them to see girls as existing for their pleasure. We have trained them in sexual entitlement. We have knocked the empathy and kindness out of them. We have desensitised them to cruelty. And then all the adults are up in arms saying, what the hell has happened? How, what is, what's the explanation? Why is this happening? You know, they're expressing surprise. The thousands, now 5,000 stories told to Chanel Contos for her petition, which I wrote about for the ABC this week, has elicited great surprise. And I'm like, why are you, why the surprise? You know, this has been building for a decade and we've allowed it to happen. It is the adults in the room that need to own this. We have allowed a giant experiment to be conducted on the sexual development of our children and young people and now we are seeing the fruits of it. We are seeing that outcome of what we have allowed uh, and, and we have to own that. Like when I speak in schools, I apologise to our young people for the failures of my generation and what we have inflicted on them resulting in mental health problems, depression, anxiety, self-harm, eating disorders, sexual assaults uh, that are being documented increasingly now. Our girls uh, hate themselves. They hate the way they're treated. Um, They describe daily sexual harassment to me at school, on the school bus, on the way home. Some girls refuse to get the bus. There's a school I know of in Queensland that was forced to purchase a separate bus for girls only because the girls said we're not riding with the boys. I mean, this is a tragedy. It's a tragedy for our young people. It's a tragedy for relationships. It's a tragedy for society, really, what we have allowed. Uh, I can't even remember the original question, but it was very good. Thank you. No, well, you, you've, you've, you've ended up exactly where <laughs> I wanted to go next, okay. which is the why question. Because, you, mm. you know, if an alien came down to planet earth and looked at this situation they would say what the proverbial is wrong with you guys how did you allow this situation to unfold and so i do want to delve a little bit into this question i was interested that you you used the pronoun we a lot there and that's the obvious place to start and so i'd like to just ask you to unpack a little bit when you say we where and I guess there are probably multiple factors here, but is it parents primarily who are either not educating their children properly or who are just being negligent in, you know, letting the kids, perhaps mainly young boys, go off and surf the internet um, unparented? Is it a, to what extent is it the government that it seems to me, and we, we've discussed this off air and this might come up, but um, we both think pornography should be completely 
illegal and for me it's a no-brainer but obviously there's not the will or <laughs> capacity there isn't even a, a it's not even on the policy agenda it seems to me in either of the major uh parties and to what extent is it the corporate commercial world obviously pornography is a business and it, it like any um like any industry it markets it's trying to sell its product um and it's a huge uh, industry so and and of course you have even non-pornography co- um businesses in the sexploitation business which again is a very perplexing thing to me there are many ways to market why you would sexualize young girls is is just uh baffling to me like why why i don't understand the process of sitting around (laughs) with the advertising company and saying even just the impulse that we have to do this to sell our product so it seems to me there are these three components you've got parents um the corporate world and then you've got governments is this a collective failure? Is it primarily parents, primarily... It's collective and it's too much to put onto parents. Of course, parents have to step up to the plate, but it's too hard for parents on their own. You know, the saying it takes a village to raise a child and parents, I believe, uh, while they do need to step up to the plate, uh, are being scapegoated by the failures of governments and our regulatory bodies. What we are seeing is the mass global commodification of sexuality primarily for profit and this has led to the sexual stunting of an entire generation. So I'm not one to blame parents for that. This is mass social saturation. It's propaganda. It's indoctrinating uh, boys especially into patterns of sexual uh, cruelty, coercion, emotional manipulation. The research is really solid on this about the role of porn in normalising aggression and coercion and domination, normalising uh, rape myths, desensitising to cruelty. I've argued for a long time that a sexist culture is grooming sexist boys and so I lay blame on the culture, again, the culture that we have allowed. Uh, we've dismantled the kind of cultural scaffolding that would have once protected to a degree our young people uh, that's all gone now and we have allowed the porn industry to be the primary sexual educator of our children in my piece for the abc i described the global pornography industry as the largest department of education in the world and it's all for profit this is a multi-billion dollar corporation uh, with no regulation no controls There's no proof of age, and this is something we've argued for here in Australia. Any child at the click of a button can enter a torture porn site, a rape porn site, a sadism site. Uh, You know, I, I won't get too graphic, but you can't on the one hand say, boys don't treat girls like pieces of meat, when the biggest department of education is teaching them that girls are indeed meat and are to be used in every vile way possible. You know, some of the most popular scenarios in the porn scripts are, well, most of them, involve coercion, involve rape scenarios, involve vulnerable women being used and exploited. Even refugee women uh, have been turned into porn. There is no woman that will not be turned into pornography. Then you have the mainstreaming of porn Scripts. You have the wall-to-wall cultural normalisation of women as sex objects, including in our local Westfield, with pornified portrayals of women floor to ceiling in a sex shop, which is allowed in family shopping malls. You see it in billboards. You see it in children's clothing. Uh, you see it in music videos, in, in gaming, and the kind of themes in gaming. It is everywhere and how are, how are our young men supposed to learn, are supposed to understand the, the dignity and worth and respect uh, to women when the porn training wheels are teaching them the exact opposite, uh, grooming them. I put, the porn industry is our biggest groomer of our young men. Uh, and again, we're seeing the outcome of that. One of the saddest stories I read was a young man who said that he was no longer aroused by skin-on-skin contact, that he walked into a room, 
if he'd see his laptop, he would get it, he would get aroused. Wow. Just the mere screen, just the mere sight of the computer. You know, it's not meant to be like this. We are not supposed to get erections from laptops, you know. But that's what what we're what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're doing. What a tragedy, you know. Where's the, where's the sensuality? Where's the wonder? Where's the discovery? Where's the slow burn? Where's the unfolding? You know, um, I, I feel that we're losing that, and sex has become to be seen as you know merely effing, giving giving a girl a pounding. Uh, where's the intimacy in that? You know, even the language around consent, I find problematic. It sounds very transactional. It sounds like a surgical procedure. Sounds like there should be a contract with lawyers to... uh... Correct, (laughs) to go over the wording. I will let you do this to me is how it comes across. Is, is Is that how sexuality is meant to be? 